Hi, this is Tampa Tech, and learn something new from PC, TVs, and gaming too. Let's get it started. Hi, it's Tampa Tech, and I'll show you how to test the transistor, and what its job is, what it's made of, all that good stuff. I'm going to get straight to the point, keep this video short and simple. Um, so a, a transistor job is to amplify a signal or to turn on and off electronic signal, like a switch. Uh, like in digital circuit, um, but in a surround sound receiver, let's say you have no volume. In a surround sound receiver, you may have a bad transistor if you have no volume. Now how it works is you plug in your um, cable box audio into your surround sound receiver, and when you do that, it needs to be amplified because the volume coming out of the cable box is very, very low. That signal is very low, so it needs to be amplified. And then the louder you crank up the volume on your surround center receiver, the more this is working harder and it gets hotter. That's why it's on a heat sink, because it absorbs heat away from the transistor. Now, if this is not properly uh, connected to the heat sink, because you don't have the grease on there to transfer the heat from the transistor to the heat sink, then eventually it will blow out and go bad. So yeah, when you're replacing a transistor, always make sure you put the grease on that transistor or else it's just gonna overheat and go bad again. What it's made of is uh, usually silicon, semiconductor. A metal is a conductor, conducts electricity. Rubber is an um, insulator. It does not conduct electricity. And uh, silicon is in between, it's a semiconductor. It semiconducts electricity. Now the reason why that's good is because you can, uh, they can manipulate it to make it do things. All right, so it acts kind of like a, a diode, it allows voltage in one way and not the other, but it's kind of like a, a, a injunction of diodes, I guess. Um, it consists of a emitter, base, and a collector. Emitter is usually grounded, so this heat sink is a ground, and this screw is a ground. And this leg most likely is the emitter, and it's grounded. You swap them, and you get a short signal. So when I put this in diode mode, by the way, my meter. You see, and that's a symbol for diode mode. And OL means open line, kind of like an open switch. And this is a closed switch, a short, like a short signal. All right, that, now you know that. Um, so let's go read the legs right here. So I got a 0.4 reading right there. So my positive is on the emitter and then my negative is right here on the middle leg terminal. And again, 0.4, that's what we're looking for. Anywhere between 0.3 to 0.7 is good. And you just flip flop them, swap them. And then I should get an open line. So it's allowing voltage in one way and not the other. Perfect, that's what we want. And then we can read it the other way. So 1.7. Now, some of these parts around that transistor may uh, interfere with the rating and the testing of that transistor. So what I recommend, if you any kind of like, if you get a weird read, reading, I would take it out of circuit and test that transistor. Just unscrew that, and then unsolder the le three legs, and take it out of circuit, and test it again out of circuit. If you're still getting weird readings, when in doubt, swap it out. All right, so it's only 50 cents, so it's no big deal. Now, if you do have a short, let's say you got a short signal like that on, the, if you go like this, and it reads shorted, okay? So if it reads shorted on these two legs, that means you got a short inside your transistor. Take it out, test it again. If you still got a short, replace it. But it might be a reason why you got that short. Either you cranked up the volume on your surround sound receiver too long, and it got shorted, or, um, one of the diodes or resistors, parts surrounding that transistor shorted it. So the cause and the effect was your transistor burnt out. So the cause could be a shorted diode or a sh uh, bad resistor. So you're gonna make sure you test the parts surrounding that transistor, it's very important. Because if you could put it in a new transistor, it may just burn out like that. So you put in 20 transistors, they keep on burning out, that means you have something surrounding that uh, transistor is causing your part to go bad. <clears throat> All right. 
Um, also, you want to make sure it is in another um, board that's plugged into this board that's causing this transistor to burn out. I've seen that happen plenty of times. So, if you have any further questions about transistors, post a comment below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And uh, also, check uh, if you're getting weird readings on the transistor, just take it all out of circuit, take the part, the transistor out of circuit, test it again with the meter. If it still gets weird readings, just replace it. It's 50 cents, who cares? Um, but also, know this. That transistor might have not gotten bad all by itself. Um, it actually could have either one of two things, taken out other parts around it, like a diode or a resistor, or blown a capacitor, or those diodes or resistor shorted out the transistor. So it's cause and effect. You have to like try to like figure out what caused it and then try to cure that problem, what caused it. So again, just backtrack, test the parts around that bad trans transistor, make sure there's no other bad parts because if you put a new transistor in, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna blow up again if you got a short diode or resistor. Capacitors that are bad are not gonna show it out all the parts around it, all right? Uh, capacitors don't do that. They just blow up and they pop and they swell up and so you get a little, a little bubble on top of the capacitor. So anyway, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope this helped you guys out. Like, share, and subscribe to Tampa Tech.